Welcome back to New Am Sam Ray, the podcast for creators. It is I, the mayor of football boys, just hanging out with people, thinkers, and doers who are moving and shaking and making things happen for their communities. And well, I came across this ebook and I was floored by it. It was called The Unexpected Transformation Being Conformed to the Image of Christ. And I have the author here, Bob Lee. And how are you doing, sir? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Ah, man, you know, this is crazy to be able to write a book in the throes of the pandemic with an idea that's kind of provocative. So walk me through this. What was the process behind this one? Well, if you want the story, it's, it began actually when I was in eighth grade. Mm. Uh, I was on the eighth grade basketball team and we were playing the best team in the village and losing badly. And my best friend and I were sitting on the bench the entire game. And then I got to watch him play the last two minutes. Mm. And... Uh, I was really hurt, but I couldn't uh, be on the floor. But anyway, I went home and ran upstairs, slammed the door, and really burst into tears on my bed. And my mom picked up on the fact that her number one son was in distress, and she came up to me and she says, well, Bob, here's a promise for you from Scripture. And she quoted Romans 8.28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good, for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Yeah. And she said, maybe it was the Lord allowing you to have this experience so you could get this verse and this promise. <clears throat> well, I felt encouraged and uh, toughed out the next 16 years of my Christian life in Romans 8, 28, knowing that in some way, somehow, this was going to work for my good and God's glory, but how I didn't have a clue. And... Uh, <clears throat> We went as missionaries with the Evangelical Alliance mission to Erie and Jaya, former Dutch New Guinea, mm -hmm. and uh, six years on the field. I was struggling with our circumstances because uh, I had a problem, and uh, it was me, because I wanted life to go the way I wanted it to, when I wanted it to, how I wanted it to, right now. Right. And life doesn't work that way, right? <laughs> it never does. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, one morning, uh, six o'clock in the morning, I was already having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. And uh, my wife called me from the other room. And she said, Bob, here's just the verse for you. Uh, look up First Chronicles 2820. And uh, David was saying to Solomon, his son, be strong and courageous and do the work and do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord God, my God is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you until the work for the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. Mm. Anyway, that really encouraged me for about a week. And uh, I was writing to my brother-in-law and I said, Scotty, pray for us. I don't know what we're going to do. Things are getting worse and worse. We're losing staff, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I sort of felt a tap on my shoulder. Uh, figuratively speaking, and, and the, the Lord spoke to my heart and said, Bob, do you believe that promise I gave you a week ago? Well, what could I say? I had it in black and white in front of me. No. And then how this happened, I'll never know to this day. But the Holy Spirit led me to Hebrews 3.12. <clears throat> I didn't even know the verse existed, really, by right. itself. But uh, he said, See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Well, the Lord gave me a promise. I didn't believe it, and in that way, I was turning away from Him. I had a sinful, unbelieving heart. And then on the, on the heels of that, He led me to Hebrews 12, 15. See to it that no one misses the grace of God, and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. <clears throat> that got my attention. Uh, I carry a Swiss Army pocket knife with me, and if I had done open heart surgery on myself, uh, I'd have seen a big black cloud of bitterness around my mm. heart. And so I, I just sat down and said, okay, it says uh, it will cause trouble and defile many. <clears throat> well, my fellowship with the Lord would be broken. Who wants to stay married to an angry and bitter husband? So my marriage is in trouble. Who wants to work with an angry and bitter missionary? So my fellow, my relationship with my fellow missionaries is in trouble. What, uh, who in the village would want to hear about Christ from an angry and bitter missionary? So my ministry is in trouble. Then what do I tell our field council why I want to quit and go home? Right. And uh, <clears throat> that would be a bit awkward. So I quit and go home. 
what do I tell our supporting churches? Well, it seems like the Lord led us, you know, liar. The Lord didn't lead you. You quit and came home. And what would I tell our families? Why I wanted to quit and come home. And I thought at that point, the price of bitterness is too great. I can't pay that. And so I had a time of <clears throat> confession before the Lord and got that straight. And then the miracle happened. Now I'm, I'm mathematically challenged. And I <laughs> As am I. <laughs> I discovered that Romans 8.29 followed Romans 8.28. <laughs> and uh, Romans 8.29 says, For those God foreknew, he also predestined. To be or planned ahead of time to be conformed to the image of his son and here i was these six years uh fighting my circumstances as enemies to be fought and conquered and uh god was using them to conform me to the image of christ and i was fighting against that too so well i had another time of prayer and i just had to pray and say lord i promise from this day forward to work together with you to accomplish your goal for my life to make me like Christ. <clears throat> After that, our situation became even worse than it was before. Mm -hmm. But I had joy in my heart because I knew now that my circumstances were teachers from God's hand to lead me to Christ likeness rather than enemies to be fought and conquered. So I had joy in my heart. Well, uh, in the fall, <clears throat> this was in the summer of 1977, in the fall of that same year, uh, Cross World Mission, which used to be unevangelized field missions, the field mission, uh, they had um, their field conference, and my wife and I were helping out with that. And uh, the theme of the conference was to be like him. And on the back of the conference folder were a list of 100 different names, titles, and characteristics of Christ. And as I looked at those, I thought, wow. Jesus is God's blueprint for my life. These are his characteristics. I better pay attention to them to see what it is I'm supposed to become. Sure. And so that began a, yeah, years long study on the names, titles, characteristics of Christ and asking the question, how can I reflect these in my life today? And so that's the, the, the book Unexpected Transformation is the result of that effort. And there's a lot of ways that we've seen, especially on this show, those that are devout, how they express their ministry. We decide to go with a book. And I some people may say that a book is kind of old school, kind of kind of uh, uh, the way as we're moving more digital and stuff. So walk me through that, the reason to write a book in this space and your craft of writing that book. Yeah, well, uh, I guess basically I wrote the book because uh, people were encouraging me to do it as I would share with them the various uh, characteristics of Christ that I had found and, and uh, encouraging them to make them a part of their lives. Uh, they said, Bob, you ought to publish this. You ought to, <clears throat> you ought to write this book. And uh, actually since writing it, uh, I've gotten good feedback from a number of folks who have started reading it. And uh, one gal told me, once I get it read through once, I'm going to read it through again. Yeah. So basically, that's it. I know it's a more digital, uh, what, culture right now, but uh, people are still reading. And, and so, uh, yeah, I it, felt this would be a good way to do it. It's funny because I, I, to that point, you know, you can be bombarded by social media posts, but I still have the best books that influence my life. Still on the uh, bookshelf, you know, they, they stand the test of time. Right? That's right. That's right. Uh, on page 45 of that book, I have a question specifically about the text, if you don't mind. Uh, you discuss the concept of dynamics, the dynamic of submission and what that means with the relationship between man and God. And I want to know your perspective on that, if you can just give a bit more a light on that and what that means. Well, the d dynamic of submission basically would be willing to let God have his way in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, we tend to want life to go the way we want it to go and how we want it to go. And, and a lot of times, even we as Christians, we have our plans and, and fail to take God into consideration. But <clears throat> I think the, the submission issue is really simple. 
as as I did, uh, promising God to work together with him to accomplish his goal for my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, then everything else flows out from that. Yeah. It's it's interesting uh, process that we have. You know, a lot of time from the outside, it may seem it's a one-way street, but once you read more texts, it definitely seems like to be more, I won't say of a partnership, but it really is more of a dynamic relationship between man and the divine. And so I like the fact that you said it in such a way that uh, if I was to basically describe to someone who may not be familiar, that it is kind of a give and go, a kind of a fluidity between the two of those. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So the walk through the day process, each chapter has a day assigned to it, not quite a year, but you know, it's a lifestyle, a lifetime too. So what, what was the, uh, the cause there? Well, uh, originally I had planned to try to make it in a devotional format for a whole year and I could have, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was getting rather lengthy and all that. And I wanted to keep the devotionals short so they're, you know, doable and not just dragging on and on and, uh, <clears throat> just make it to the point. And, uh, uh, for that reason, too, um, I begin each section with some questions to think about, like uh, he is the forgiving one. How important is forgiveness to you personally? Uh, how can you forgive others? And uh, what's the cost if you don't? And, uh, <clears throat> and then, uh, yeah, just to kind of engender thoughts and, and so on, and so it's good for even classes or, or discipleship type of setting. And then I end each section with uh, an application because I, I hate it when preachers preach and, and tell us what we should do and never tell us how to do it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so uh, <clears throat> so I end each section with how do you do it uh, to try to make it very practical. Yeah. Well, describe to me your writing process. I know there's other aspects of your life too. How are you able to carve out parts of your day to create as in the mornings, afternoon, when inspiration strikes, certain days? I actually, uh, for the most part, used the uh, used my quiet time to do this. Uh, it's a time I set aside each morning to pray and to read scripture and so on. and uh, And then I would just carve out some time during those few minutes to write on one particular aspect of, of Christ's character. Um, it would take me maybe two or three days, uh, maybe an hour each morning or something like that to, mm -hmm. to work on it and to kind of get it firmed up <clears throat> to say what I wanted it to say um, and to think about it for myself because as I was going through it, I wasn't just thinking about this for others, but you know, how can I reflect this character of Christ in my life today? And so um, <clears throat> that's that was my focus. And so that's what I used my quiet time for, basically, for a number of years. Was there any chapter or passes that you had to wrestle with to really, like, articulate what you were feeling? Uh, and how did you get through that if you had that situation happen? Yes, there was. Uh, the section on he is the persecuted one. <laughs> nobody mm -hmm. likes to be persecuted right and uh <clears throat> i put that off for years <laughs> literally uh before i was willing to tackle it um but i finally did and of course the process i just followed as i did with all the others but uh it was just the topic that was a bit daunting to me at that point and uh but i think i was able to handle it okay and <clears throat> and got through it but uh yeah it was that was tough going on that one yeah and perseverance is does does count does matter right <laughs> <laughs> so the book is currently available on, on amazon and other outlets uh walk me through that that must have been a cool idea having your life's work being able to be sold and to be consumed by others well yes and and uh, of course this was done through zulon press and uh Actually, this book was the child of the first book I wrote called The Saga of a Bent Nail, uh, me being the bent nail, and how the Lord straightened me out those first six years. 
And uh, it was during that time, of course, as I described earlier, how I got started in the project to begin with. But uh, the saga of Abent Nail describes our 31 years of ministry in Erie and Jaya and uh, a lot of the lessons that we learned and fun times we had and some of the tough times we went through. But uh, <clears throat> they were all colored by unexpected transformation. In right. other words, I was in the process of writing that uh, during that time in Erie and Jaya. And uh, yeah, so <clears throat> unexpected transformation came out of that. Now I forget where, where I was going with it. but <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, we were, we were discussing what the dynamics of self-publishing, having it available for people to consume it, and they can have their, draw their own opinions from your research and work and that sort of thing. Right, <clears throat> right. Well, I went, uh, I went with the self-publishing avenue because <clears throat> when I tried various publishers along the way, and this has been quite a number of years ago now, well, not so many. But anyway, one publisher after another said, no, we don't want this, or they rejected it for some reason, or we have already have something on this, we don't want any more, we're not interested in this particular avenue. So anyway, that uh, I was talking with various pastors, and so on, they suggested self-publishing. And uh, so that's why I went with Zulon okay. and uh, got the two books and, and uh, working on the third right now. Very inspirational for someone that has an idea that maybe seems outside uh, acceptance. You can always create your own path and do it yourself. And I commend you on doing that and not giving up, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if someone's considering uh, checking out Unexpected Transformation, what's something that you can say you can, they can pull from once uh, they read through it, once they go through the chapters and be from, familiar with the passages? Well, my hope is that uh, they will go on the same journey as I have been on. In other words, asking themselves, how can I reflect this character of Christ in my life today? Uh, each day's worth uh, stands by itself, so they can take as long as they want to read through and think through any of the entries. And uh, hopefully, they will more and more reflect Christ's character in their lives and, and consciously reflect his character in their lives. Um, I, I've been concerned that many, many Christians don't even have this on their radar. <clears throat> uh, they just go through life without really thinking about reflecting Christ. And uh, my thought is, if this is God's goal for our lives, that had better be our goal for our lives as well. And so my hope is that this book would encourage Christians to make that their goal. Unexpected transformation, being conformed to the image of Christ out now where books are sold. Bob, I'm so glad if you were able to come with us today on New Amsterdam Radio. If anyone wants to follow you or connect with you on the digital space, how would they go about doing that? Uh, they could email me, probably. Um, I'm, not, I'm not that conversant with uh, websites and blogs and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, they can email me or even uh, write. Uh, to me here at my home and uh, or if they want to call they could do that too and we'll make sure to have the email in the show notes so if you are interested in learning more about the book you can go ahead about doing that right thanks so, thanks so much for being on the show bob hope to have you back soon and then a future edition of new am sam radio okay thank you very much